And so you've been so you've been collecting properly since 2016. Yeah. I would and say. you told me earlier before we started that you've got <laughs> near about three and a half thousand books. Is that yeah. issues or is that like issues and trades or it's I would say it's more issues. I try to collect the the full runs. But you know okay. how hard it is now with like first appearances and stuff. You kind of like you're fighting over a comic book that you've got the, the rest of the collection for, but because there's a first appearance or a first camera appearance, it's blown up and it's it's, it's flipping on eBay for like seven hundred yeah. quid. Um, so I do try to collect single issues and runs and stuff. But I, I'm starting to get into trade paperbacks. I think the older I get. Yeah. I want to start reading the story as a full instead of waiting two or three weeks for it yeah. to come out. It's like when you watch a TV episode. Do you know what I mean? You don't want Binge to wait. In, like, yeah. 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 Don't want to wait a week. You want to no. get it all done in one yeah. go. I mean, you know, I, I started on trades and now I'm going from trades to issues. <laughs> but I'm adamant on keeping some things as trades because mm-hmm. I do like reading them all in that one hit. You know, I like going to bed and I like reading an issue out of mm-hmm. my trade and just like, and just putting it down, knowing that I've got one more to go mm-hmm. tomorrow, and that's really nice. But out of your, so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you've got quite a few completed runs. I have, yeah, I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, do you have well, a favourite? I have got my favourite right, and it has to be. I'm just going to separate them all here and make sure I've got them all okay. right. So, so it's what is your favourite? My favourite run, right, and this is what got me into horror comics is okay. Basketball of Heads by Joe Hill. Right, so there is seven issues, and it is the full run here. And this is the first ever horror comic that I really read. Now, I wasn't really a fan of Joe Hill. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of DC in the comics, but I'm more of a fan of Marvel in the movies. I completely agree. Because Marvel is more generically aimed at families, more like comedic values from from the films whereas dc is kind of more dark like like justice league yeah. and, and stuff like yeah. that so, but with the comics when they brought out their dc black label and i found out that joe hill obviously the son of stephen king was putting his stamp on the brand with hill house comics i was like this is a no-brainer i've got to get into it and it was from basket full of heads that i kind of that was the first horror full run that i collected and it's an insane story <laughs> such an awesome story so first so are you a big fan of horror then or was that always or like were you not at the time and that kind of brought you into it and then you've been a fan since then i mean i love horror horror movies like i'll sit down and watch a horror movie like i have to do it on my own because my wife doesn't like yeah, it i can't and, and i'm the kind of person that will sit down in the dark and i'm like if i'm watching a horror movie it's got to be dark it's got to be pitch black um, but in horror comics, I'd never really touched it. Now. I mean, I'd known about Joe Hill for a while because obviously, like Lock and Key. Yeah. Um, but even then, when it came out in comic form, I never really read it. I only really started to understand about it when it went into the Netflix TV show. Yeah. And then obviously, when DC Black Label, this was I was like, it's a horror comic. This is wicked because obviously he's done. He's got his Hill House comics as fantastic writers, but he's also write some of them as well. So obviously, Joe Hill wrote Basket for the Heads. He also wrote. Uh, plunge number one. Plunge, okay. Plunge. Ooh. like a Jaws type thing, is it? Yeah, it's it's all back. It's basically about like all the uh, the naughties and viciousness within the sea and something like that. I'm not going to give too much away because if there are new uh, horror fans out there that want to jump into it, check out DC Black Label Hill House comics. But Basket Full of Heads is probably the one comic collection that got me into the horror genre. Nice, nice, and that's your favourite collection ever. I would, I wouldn't say ever. No. Um, I mean, my favourite collection ever. I would have to say it's the Batman run because I've got from number one, and we are now. I think we're hitting a hundred and one. But this is at the moment. This is probably my favourite because it's horror. It's coming up to Halloween, so I thought it was very fitting to show a in Halloween. The mood. I'm in the mood, yeah. I go, I go through chops and changes. Like one week it might be Batman, next week it might be yeah. Nightwing, next week it might be Basket Full of Heads. So, so but but you kind of like to stick to that kind of dark theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very dark. Yeah, yeah. mysterious. Mysterious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for this one, mysterious. A lot like the Yoda. Okay. Yeah. Well, great. I mean, um, so you're. 
still collecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is there anything Far you've got much. your say it again? Far too much. Far too much. I mean, yeah. is your is your wife happy with that? Um, well, the other week I went to a place in space and dropped like seventy quid. <sighs> um, and I got home. She was like, "How much is this?" I was like, "Oh." <laughs> Money. But yeah, do you know what? It's all irrelevant. Like you can't take it with you. And some people might say, but you're spending paper to buy paper. But it's a hobby. It's a collection. Everyone's got yeah. it. Everyone's got exactly. it. Um, if it keeps you happy, if you enjoy what you do, we've only got a certain amount of time on this earth, so you might as well just enjoy it. Just have a good time, isn't it? Exactly. Have a good time. Um, so does your wife, I'm a, she, she must support it in some degree. Oh, do you know what? Like I say, she is my wonder woman because i'm not being funny i wouldn't be able to do half the stuff i do without her by my side like oh. it's we've got we've got three fantastic kids she's a wonder woman to them but she's also a wonder woman to me letting me take over the whole dining room <laughs> with my funko pop collection my comics everything like she's an absolute diamond so are you able to give us a little i can do spin? Right, you... there we go just, right, just so another one there we go look that, that's that's the the fireplace. There's, there's some of the Funko Pop collection, wow. and then comics, comics, more Funko Pops. Wow. So yeah, so as I said, that is literally it's my dining room that I've taken over. Um, and yeah, I mean credit to her for letting me do it. She ain't really got a choice, let's be honest. But <laughs> well, you know, at least at least she's not bitter about it, and she helps you out. Um, not that I know of, anyway. Say it again. <laughs> Not that I know of. <laughs> She's very good at hiding it. Yes. <laughs> uh, so you've got what? Three three children? I've got three boys. Well. Yeah, three boys. Got an um, eight year old, eight year old, a three year old, and a two year old. Wow. Four boys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are they into this as well? Like you were with your dad? or My, my eldest is eight years old. He likes to draw comics. So he will sit and draw. Um, my middle child, he's kind of. Is at that age now where he just wants to fight and play football and do sports and yeah. pick up my Funko Pops and stuff. And my two-year-old don't. He's, I swear he's got 666 in the back of his head. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it's uh, it's hard work. But, yeah, I think they, they enjoy what I do. They they kind of know me as, oh, are you doing a live show? Oh, blah, blah, blah. And they like my jumper, like Geeky Guy comics. So they yeah, kind of yeah. say, they know me as daddy, but then they kind of also know me as Geeky Guy comics, which is really weird to have three little yeah. people that look up to you as your alias it's, it's really surreal right but it's good so, it's good i'm sure they will get into comics i'm sure they will like um you know do you do do, do you want them to do you you know do you have things in mind you know like I mean, with your dad then when when they turn to. 10 yeah i mean i would love them so i'd love to be able to give that comic that I received, Iron Man 200, to my little boy and say, if you're going to start collecting comics, you've got to start with this one. I'd love that. That's, that's kind of my, my dream. Um, but if they, if they, I know they, they need to collect Funko Pops because Funko Pops are awesome. Comic yeah. books are awesome. So to answer your question, yes, yes, I will. And they need to do what daddy does. <laughs> need to. Otherwise they're out. <laughs> out. They're off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, I think that's really nice to kind of, you know, keep basically keeping it in the family. And like yeah. you said earlier, it's like, you know, it's, it runs in the genes. Yeah. And, and and if your boy now is is uh, drawing, mm -hmm. drawing comics, is he, is he taking inspiration for anything you've got on the wall or anything you collect? Or is he just making up his own stuff? No, he kind of got, uh, I think for one of his birthdays, we bought him a magazine. It's like Build Your Own Comic and it's got the comic section panels in it and stuff oh, like that. It's cool. Spider-Man orientated. So he got that and it's stick the stickers on a Spider-Man and he was really proud of it. And it was, it was I reviewed it on my Instagram channel. No so way. I did, did it as his review and he's really happy about it. And obviously it got it got five geeks out of five, which is the, the best money yeah. on Geek Guy Comics. And it was, it made his day. It, it was wicked. It was like, he's actually on my channel. So yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool, and he loved it, and he's he's always drawing and stuff like that. So that's good. That's awesome. You like you like his little you like his celebrity. You I like, am. I like am. Yeah. That's I've, awesome. got to, I've got to be like that to someone. If it ain't my kids, then yeah, of course. It might be Mavis down the road. <laughs> you're right, Mavis. Uh, <laughs> so going back, going back to what you're uh, currently collecting. So yeah, you said you, you said you got about three and a half thousand books. Um, but what, yeah, so what are you currently collecting? Um, 
and I've actually got this written down. What do you, what are you currently collecting, and why are you currently collecting that? So, I'm, I've, it's an ongoing collection, but it's uh, the Batman run. I think has mm -hmm. been insane from from issue one all the way through to where we are now. Issue one hundred, I'm collecting that. Um, what else am I collecting? I am collecting obviously the Hill House horror comics, um, Harley Quinn continuing run. Um, we've got the um, what is it called? What is it? it is the Batman the Three Jokers. Yeah, so well, that'll be a very short collection. Very, very short collection, number three. <laughs> but it's in depth. I kind of like to read. When a new issue comes out, if it's a short run, so like obviously Batman Three Jokers is only three, I kind of want to, every issue that comes out, I'll read the beginning of it again. So we're on issue two. So when that came out, I read issue one, issue two, yeah. when three comes out, I'll do that again. Um, but it's just ongoing collections that I'm kind of picking up. Anything that takes my interest, really. Like, I'm a Thor fan now. Uh, yeah. I, that's all thanks to Donny Cates. Uh, I'm a Venom fan. So I recently just, I'm trying to haul every single one. Yeah. Issue one Again, is that because of Donny or is it because of, or you just all Venom? It kind of like, I wasn't really into Venom until the film came out. And I was like, well, I've, I'd read a couple of comics. I was like, I want to see what the film's like. And then obviously mm. the film got a big furore about it. And it was when Donny took over the run, I was like, he's onto something special here. Obviously, I think he knows what he's doing with the character. He's got a clear definition of how he wants it to come across. And the same with Thor. Um, so they're kind of like the two, along with Batman, that, that I'm really collecting at the moment. I'm really interested in that. So I'm kind of picking up the variant covers, the standard covers as well. So I'm kind of picking up three or four covers yeah. every run. Okay. But it's, yeah, Venom is. Yeah. Very, Venom is very interesting at the moment. Ah, oh, good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Like, like you know me by now, definitely more of an indie guy <laughs> yeah. instead of the whole DC Marvel. Like, I've got a bit of DC and Marvel, but yeah, much more. At the moment, I'm really into my Boom Studio books. Mm -hmm. Got a bit of um, uh, uh, Vault. Uh, mm -hmm. Was it Heavy by Vault Comics? Uh, really looking forward to issue two of that. And I'm trying to, just trying to see now what else have I got. Um, a couple of Dark Horse. I think yep. my earliest issue is um, God of War <laughs> issue one from Dark Horse. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a gift. That was a gift to me years ago. Um, but yeah. So, but what is drawing you to these collections? Then is it the writers? Is it the characters? The art? The publisher? Like what is it? Well, you've you've kind of just touched on Boom Studios, and I'm a, I really enjoyed. It. I don't know if you read it. It was the Alienated run. No, not seen so, that. So I did that, it. Uh, it was it was insane. It was wicked. It was kind of about these three characters called Sam. So you had Samuel, Samir, and Samantha. Okay. And it's kind of like all about emotions that everyone's going through, mental health, everything. Like it's massive at the moment. And it was really a cool comic that touched into that. So my thing at the moment is that the indie comics like Image, IDW, Dark Horse, and Boom Studios, they're all doing something that the big players like DC and Marvel should be doing. Now it, yeah. During lockdown, Boom Studios kind of ran away with it. They took to the forefront of everything. They and nailed they, it. They, they absolutely killed it. And they were doing stuff that Marvel and DC were probably looking over their shoulder thinking, we need to catch up with this. And it really brought, in, it really brought indie comics, in my mind, to the front of it. Yeah. And so what, what, things, what things in particular are you talking about there where, <laughs> where Marvel and DC, they think they're missing out on? Like, Is it like the emotional... I think it was, do you know what I mean? Because obviously with Marvel, with the likes of, we had War of the Realms, which was yeah. a massive, massive comic from uh, Russell Dalterman, the artists that were working on that. But again, Marvel seemed to be in this uh, point of transition where everything is an additional issue. So we've got like the likes of Empire, where it's like four or yeah. five, you've got to read four or five comics to get back to issue three because there's so many adjoining comics. It's the same. A lot of tie-ins. It is, and it's the same with DC. They kind of did it with Year of the Villain. You had to read, like, Year of the Villain 1, and then you had to read, like, I don't know, The Joker number 4, then Lex Luthor, yeah. Superman, and Legion. Yeah. And it was just, it was all kind of that. But the artists and the reader, uh, the writers, I think the emotion was missing from Marvel and DC, and I think Boom Studios kind of just thought, this is, this is where it's at at the moment. If we can just do one solid story that concentrates on one thing, one character, one character arc, yeah. instead of floating around in four or five different issues. I know. 
And that was kind of it. I know. So, like, I think, uh, well, I think you've read it as well, but um, Seven Secrets. Yes. Issue three. Um, out tomorrow, by the way. Issue three. Yeah, I, I got my order in today, actually. Really happy. Um, but, yeah, issue one. Mm-hmm. All I expected was some cool action. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, ah, who Tom Taylor mm-hmm. writes it, and I can't yeah. remember the artist, unfortunately. Um, do you know? No, I don't. No, okay, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, Tom Taylor. Uh, first time reading Tom Taylor. So all I expected was um, some action, you know, some cool, like, little hidden secret stuff, as the name is the book, you know, The Seven Secrets. But I did not expect to get my heart wrenched yeah like at the end of that and the same with issue two and i, and I think you know that is that is what um you know some some areas of boom studios are doing really well at in yeah. that kind of uh area and i think it's awesome um but yeah the stuff they're bringing out at the moment are really original different you know really awesome concepts but they're bringing in good writers as well to do it and i think that's what that is what is going to bring them more and more forward yeah. and get a bit more of a spotlight, you know, and kind of kind of nudge Marvel and DC a bit and go, come on, what are you doing? 